uh, my name is Tamara Human. I'm from Ukraine. I came directly from Ukraine to come here to have a talk, uh, to meet you guys, and I'm happy to be here for at least a few days without bombing and stuff like that. Uh, so, uh, as uh, it was said, uh, today I will share our experience of doing vegan advocacy during the full-scale war, with, which uh, sounds impossible, but it is impossible. It is possible and uh, hopefully I will uh, show you what we uh, were doing uh, and how succeed uh, we were with the vegan advocacy. So I want to start uh, with uh, introducing you to our organization and what we did before the February 24th. Uh, Every animal was founded in uh, 2019. I was a founder and uh, since the beginning it was a vegan organization. Since the very start we knew we want to promote veganism and we wanted to create the vegan world and all our project was uh, meant to uh, make people go vegan, make it easier for them. So uh, talk about farmed animals, help sanctuaries and doing a lot of other things that uh, normalize uh, veganism. So uh, at first we started with the, with the seems like easiest way, vegan outreach on the streets. Before every animal was founded, we were part of the Anonymous for the Voiceless. I'm sure everyone is aware of this group, but then we moved forward because we thought that um, street uh, action is good, but it's not enough to educate people. So we wanted to do more, do more educational work, more events. Uh, and uh, we left Anonymous for the Voiceless and started our own uh, pretty similar action, Open Your Eyes, um, but it was only one of our projects. Uh, in 2020, we s created an um, online vegan uh, course. It's seven days free course on veganism. It was our answer to uh, lockdown and coronavirus situation because we uh, talked uh, to our team and said we have to continue our work no matter what okay everyone is at home so we have to go online and spread the vegan message online and it took us about three months to uh, build the seven day course and uh, every day in course is uh, has specific topic like first day is about food industry second is about uh, clothing and so on and the sixth day is very important as well because we talk how to talk about veganism with family and friends because majority of vegans i think uh, deal with the issues of explaining why they are vegans so they have a lot of jokes on themselves so we want to give them support if the person decide to go vegan so they feel not alone so we have a support chat where like hundreds of people there vegans from all over ukraine ha who mm, give advices and support and so on inside this project we created the vegan guide to ukraine which is almost everything you need to know in ukraine about veganism it it has lists of shops supermarkets clothing brands um, cruelty free makeup and so on and so on it's a huge list so many people who um, did our course, they said that this is the best thing they discovered because now they know where to shop and where to buy stuff. Because when I became vegan seven years ago, it was a struggle a bit in Ukraine uh, to be vegan, but now it's not. Oops. And then we created another huge project, it may be one of the hugest projects we uh, ever made. It is a vegan tour. Uh, which is the tour to the s different cities in Ukraine with the program, uh, with the street action, with the lecture, with the film screening, with the food sampling, like uh, we were giving vegan food to try and uh, we wanted to do it in 2020 and again it was Corona, we couldn't make it but we did it last year and we went to 10th uh, cities of Ukraine and it was a huge project. We reached to so many peoples and three cities of those we visited they started their own chapters of our organization and continued their activism their work so it was really inspiring and team building work for the vegan community and the picture is from the uh, the animal rights march the thing is in ukraine there is animal rights march but it's about 
some kinds of animals, not uh, every animal. Uh, so we created a vegan column there where we were like uh, shouting uh, the vegan messages. So then we did uh, a lot of lectures for schools, for universities, for businesses. Uh, we did about 40 lectures uh, and uh, it was for uh, about veganism and also about impact of animal agriculture to environment. And they were received really well and we got a lot of great uh, feedback from that. And then we did a lot of other events uh, like um, charity vegan running to raise funds, uh, fundraising, uh, charity markets, uh, Christmas party for vegans and stuff like that. So building um, kind of comfortable community, comfortable events for vegans so, and their friends so they can see that we are normal and we can have fun and as everyone else. Uh, and uh, the last project uh, before the full-scale war, it, was, um, it is a children's book about veganism that we created in December. And uh, it is the first book for children about veganism in Ukrainian. So uh, it, is, uh, has, it has a lot of illustration and it talks about veganism in a children's way. Uh, and um, again, um, it was really well received. And we had a lot of plans for this year. We had uh, the survey was planning to uh, find out how many vegans there are in Ukraine. We have a vegan map almost finished with the develop st uh, stage. But um, uh, Russia has a different plan. Uh, and uh, 24th of February was the worst day of my life, the scariest day of my life. We woke up at 4 or 5 a.m. from the bombing and uh, all, all people were freaked out, was panic. Uh, no one knew what to do, what to expect. Uh, it was, I, I can't even uh, explain. You can maybe imagine how it's, um, how crazy it is. So the whole day we were hiding in the bomb uh, shelter and we were thinking what we can do. Next, uh, because we had already the war law, uh, so my husband wasn't able to uh, to leave the country and we didn't want to. Uh, my parents told me to leave the country. I said, no, I want to stay in Ukraine. And uh, the whole night we were here, like trying to listen if there are bombing, coming missiles. And uh, in the morning when the curfew, like the hours that you're not allowed to go outside was end, uh, we took our dog, Red, all rescued, and went to Lviv, which is the um, west, uh, west part of Ukraine. We wanted to go to the Carpathian, but in 24 hours, driving non-stop, we could only get to Lviv. In normal time, it took uh, take seven hours. But it was messed up. We saw tanks, bombs, and um, yeah, so we stayed in Lviv for two months but we were not just sitting there uh, very first days we with my team thought what we can do to help humans and animals and uh, the first obvious thing uh, it was to help animal refugees to help them to uh, to transfer from the um, from the the most unsafe uh, places uh, help them to foster find new homes so we were doing this for a couple days and uh, i saw that Already many people are helping uh, dogs and cats and I thought as a vegan organization we can do something more and do more on, the, on a veganism way. And my friend from uh, Lviv, they told me about uh, the kitchen they were working on to feed refugees in Lviv. And I thought, wow, this is amazing idea to feed people with the vegan food. We can do this in other cities because our organization is, uh, we have a lot of volunteers in many cities, so we thought uh, we can do this in other cities. And uh, this is how we started the Vegan Kitchen in Ukraine. The first cities were uh, Kiev, Vinitsa, and Rivne. And we, uh, we were on the stage, we were trying to figure out how to do it in the best way. Uh, so the first days was not so good, 
But then many, many other cities joined, and uh, as for now, we have 10 cities operating and giving out the free vegan uh, meals for refugees, for soldiers, for people in need, for elderly people. Uh, and, um, and yeah, it is just some pictures. So, um, and as a part of this project, we thought we knew already vegan soldiers because many of our friends went to defend uh, the country. So we thought we want to support them because obviously in the army it's uh, nor normal, uh, traditional uh, dishes, non nothing vegan or even vegetarian. So we sent them uh, the vegan parcels. But I wanted to make as much as possible. So I tried to find all vegans in the army. I reached to so many different people to try to find the vegans or at least vegetarians uh, who I can help, who we can help. And uh, one of the guy who was in the, like he was kind of not the main person, but kind of the, the main in some battalion, he said, lady, we are at the army. We don't have any vegans. Like, what do you want? We all eat meat. We are men. Uh, I was said, oh, okay, at least I tried. But then maybe in one week, we start receiving requests from soldiers around Ukraine because the word of mouse radio, so the soldiers started uh, saying other soldiers that they are guys, girls who can help you. And we started receiving requests and like in one day we could receive 10, 15 requests, for, requests from all over the uh, Ukraine. And uh, we understood that we have more volunteers to pack the parcels. And uh, this is how we start uh, also sending the parcels. And uh, in this parcel, we try to pack um, the food that soldier can add to their uh, food they have there, because they might have beans or some uh, cereals. So we try to, uh, to feel what they don't have there, like meat alternatives, protein um, stuff, and, uh, and so on. And um, yeah, and so, so far we, uh, I think we covered about 300 of vegans and vegetarians in the army, and we sent uh, more than 600 of parcels, and this parcel is last for two, three weeks. So every two, three weeks we send again, uh, if it's possible, because uh, the, the closer to front line, the harder to get there with the mail or the, with the volunteers. And uh, the amazing story about this project is that this also works as a vegan propaganda because these soldiers, they show their fellow soldiers what they have and everyone are interested and they, what do you have there, can I try? And we had um, a case where other soldiers tried the food we, we sent, uh, not the parcel, but the hot food. Uh, and uh, um, because soldiers always share the food, and they were so interested that eight soldiers from the battalion wanted to eat plant-based from from us, and uh, we uh, from we had seven uh, meals for that battalion, and they added eight more, so we got uh, 15. Uh, so yeah, and we received a lot of. Uh, great uh, gratefulness from from them and uh, no, it's not only about food you have to understand because uh, the vegans uh, or any soldier in the army they feel um, they maybe don't um, need so much this food but the understanding that someone from other side supporting you not in the front line supporting you sending you the food and caring about you, caring about your needs, caring about your beliefs, it's very important and crucial. And uh, the girl from the, uh, the soldier, she is defending on the East and she was vegetarian before the full scale war. And uh, when uh, she was in front line, she couldn't stay on the vegetarianism. And, but after she received our parcel, she said that now she is back to vegetarianism, even though she is not always can have our uh, help, but she decided to, to be vegetarian because she received that support and that made her like believe and uh, make her stronger, I, I would say. So, so far 
we prepared uh, 40,000 of free vegan meals for people, refugee soldiers, and sent, as I said, uh, 620 parcels. This is me sending the parcel, and it says glory to uh, armed forces of Ukraine. And as you see, it's big, and it's for like one person, so there are a lot of food there. Uh, the, another unexpected outcome of this was the media attention. Uh, we would not even try to reach media and saying, oh, let's see, <laughs> we show, we help in the vegan soldiers. But uh, we received a lot of attention of media and they were all curious about how it's be vegan in the army and who supports vegan in the army. We got even international um, articles uh, on uh, that international media covered the, our project and what we have done. Uh, and uh, the, I was and our team was invited to national TV news, which something never happened. Uh, in Ukraine, if there was um, news about veganism, it always was something uh, joking about, oh, these vegans like uh, non-healthy and stuff like that. But now they were talking with respect, uh, with uh, like, like it's normal. Like veganism is normal, no, no jokes, no disrespect, uh, opposite. They were so impressed by uh, veganism, by the vegan soldiers, by uh, us who, who support the soldiers. And um, like there, at the beginning there was a kind of, oh, vegans, they just want to uh, attract attention, uh, eat what you have. And we said, listen, are you in Russia? Like, eat what you have. Like, we care about our soldiers. And if they want Frappuccino, we will give them Frappuccino. Like, if they want a star, we will give them the star. They are defending our country. And we will do... This is the least we can do for them. Just give them normal food they want, that they that want to stick to. So, yeah, and uh, I was I was even invited to the... Uh, to the event with government officials who are helping us to, to pack the parcels. I was like, is it real? Like, is it so, like I'm dreaming or something? So uh, it was interesting. And uh, again, today it was a talk about the peti uh, petition uh, in Austria. We had uh, the same in Ukraine and it also raised uh, enough votes. Uh, the, the needed amount of votes is 25,000 uh, to president to take a look on that petition and we got this 25,000 even a little bit more and we received the answer from the president he said like la 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 blah 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 uh, okay let's <laughs> uh, let's move to the prime minister the petition so now we are on the stage uh, the prim prime minister has to look into it and decide what to do next because he's the one who make um, order for, for the Minister of Defense. So we'll see. Uh, it's good that poli uh, politics at least has a discussion on it. It's already a good shift. And uh, um, we talk a lot about this, a lot of media talk about this petition. So I think because uh, kind of there are a bit pressure to, to the government on, on this topic. So maybe not now, but at least we are in a good stage for this. Maybe, maybe we uh, will have this. Because in Ukraine, we have many producers, vegan producers that already does uh, this, this food, already do this food. And it's not hard to replace. The only thing we need is this political will. Um, for for this to make real, not uh, not hard at all. So we'll see. So from after the 24th of February, we started the vegan kitchen in Ukraine, but uh, not only that. Uh, we decided that we can print uh, our book for children refugees, 
and we printed 24,000 of copies with the support of uh, other organization and uh, we gave to children in Ukraine, in Poland, in Europe countries where refugees are and we also received a lot of good um, feedback because uh, the book has a lot of illustration and kids love this so hopefully uh, they have an idea now what veganism is and that animals uh, has, have to be free. Um, of course, when the full-scale war started, we thought, okay, vegan advocacy, not, not at the time, and we stopped our Vegan Express course. But then we see that people became kind of more sensitive to, um, to injustice in, in general, and especially of harming animals. We saw in news how people react to uh, mistreatment of animals and because there was a lot of cases, Russia, uh, Russian soldiers uh, killed uh, horses, burned them alive, uh, killed dogs, ate dogs, uh, killed pigs, and people were so angry about this. And we thought, let's try to resume uh, Vegan Express. Let's see. And on May 1st, we did a test uh, launch and we received 180 registration without, almost without no ad, like I put $3 maybe per day. Uh, and it was the huge amount of registration we couldn't even expect. So we decided to continue the Vegan Express from that point. And um, already more than 2,000, uh, no, 1,000 registered uh, since the May without no ad, like we don't put now advertisement. Uh, and more than that, we uh, created a blog uh, in the website and we wrote um, 25 articles about veganism, vitamins, and it's also like people reading it, reading information, and we receive feedback that people go in vegan now because of the course, because of what they read and what they see. So uh, there is no bad time for vegan advocacy. <laughs> Even the war, it's time to talk about veganism, talk about animals, talk, ab uh, talk about justice for animals. And uh, you can trust me, <laughs> it, it's um, worth doing. And uh, we moved forward. Uh, we started uh, educational events and uh, in September we organized a lectorium about veganism and sport and more than 100 people joined uh, the lectorium. We invited uh, professional athletes on plant-based diet and people were so interested in it. So people still want to leave. They still want to get new information. So uh, we try to do it now uh, organizing the educational events. And the new project we recently launched is a charity festival, Vegan Weekend. It was my dream before the full-scale war, and I couldn't imagine that we can do it now. But we organized the Vegan Weekend to raise funds for the vegan parcels. And uh, we invited vegan soldiers to that event. Um, you can see the small over there. They're sitting three, uh, three vegan soldiers. So they were sharing their experience in the army, being vegan in the army. And so many people came, listened to them, uh, non-vegans, vegans, everyone. And uh, there was food court with vegan food and auction with the war artifacts. And we raised um, 150 southern grivnas for vegan parcels, which is a huge amount of money. It's, I think, about 4,000 euros. Uh, so, yeah, we did, we did that and we are planning the next one on the 6th of November, uh, again, to raise money for the vin vegan winter clothing for the medical battalion. Because now it's winter coming and of course uh, there is a huge need for soldiers and medical soldiers for the vegan, vegan uh, not winter clothing but we want to make it vegan, so we raise funds for buying the vegan clothing. And uh, surprisingly, we started doing uh, events for kids. We went to Bucha, uh, which is maybe heard of this city, because at the be beginning of the full-scale war, Bucha was occupied by Russia's, uh, Russians, and they, um, they did a lot of... Uh, awful things there, they killed a lot of people. So we went to Bucha to organize event for kids to make, to bring them some magic. We invited the magician and he showed them magic 
and we uh, read the book and talked to them. And uh, after we finished, about I asked, like, how many of you want to go vegan now? And about 10 kids raised their hands, uh, and uh, they were really open to veganism because uh, there was a funny situation. I asked, like, do you agree that everyone deserves the right to live? And they say, yes, but not Putin. <laughs> I was like, true. Uh, and then uh, we were invited to the mountain in Car uh, to the Carpathian mountain, to the camp for kids to talk about veganism. This is also something I couldn't imagine uh, before, that someone would uh, invite us to talk about veganism with the kids. And the interesting thing about that camp, that they have 100% vegan food. And it was, and the kids was non-vegan, non-vegan there. And we talked to kids and the many of them registered to the course. There was a smaller group from like eight uh, years, but the older kids, like 14, 15, they were all interested, especially girls. And they followed me in Instagram and YouTube and they uh, reached out to me like, oh, do you recommend this food or do you recommend that? So yeah, kids are, awesome to work with even if I don't really like kids but but yeah I can work with them uh, so and this is not uh, so what I wanted to say again that it may seem that you want to survive yourself and just leave the country just uh, protect yourself but the great thing about Ukrainians now that uh, we try to help everyone and uh, it um, you you can see that people trying to rescue animals dogs cats uh, chickens like um, everyone who they can uh, and uh, it's inspiring and I feel that uh, this is a shift in the minds of Ukrainians that they saw how they can be vulnerable from the aggression from power so now they can relate this to issue of exploiting animals. This is what we see and that this is what we hope that um, now like people are more open to uh, veganism because they understand how uh, it can be when someone is trying to kill you. And of course, um, uh, if you think that our work is uh, um, is important and if you want to support um, what we do in Ukraine, how we promote veganism, uh, it would be very appreciated if you can donate us. It's our website, everanimal.org in English version and the QR code is uh, directed to the website. Uh, so we spend a lot of money to support people and soldiers and to raise awareness about animal exploitation. So of course, um, every cent, every uh, euro is uh, important. We uh, post on our social media what we do so you can follow uh, what we have done and what our progress is so you, um, so you know that your money, your donations are used in the, in the right way. And, um, and Ukraine will win, for sure, uh, because uh, we are brave we are uh, we are Ukrainians, and uh, we don't we won't allow anyone to take our home from us, and we will fight until we win. We will fight until every every city, every countryside is back to Ukraine. We won't um, give up for sure, and uh, it's uh, our goal for now right we want to win uh, this war and this is you also have to understand that it is war on our territory but it's not only our war because if we won't stop uh, russians they will go further they would not stop in ukraine they would want other countries and they always did russian imperia like they always wanted to take er or everyone so we have to stop it and we fight for democratic world, for, for the world where is uh, no uh, place for torture, no place for terrorism, no place for killing uh, people and invading to your neighbor countries. And I, I can tell that um, 
Ukraine is beautiful and Ukrainians want to be uh, in the West uh, part and we just are not lucky with the neighbors. Uh, <laughs> but, but we try our heart uh, as much as we can and we do our work and uh, as a vegan organization we do vegan advocacy because it's our main goal. But um, it is important for every person to support and I know that many already did a lot of support and I'm grateful and I can thank you from all Ukrainians uh, that thank you for your support. Thank you for helping Ukrainians, helping Ukraine and uh, yeah, and Ukraine will win. Thank you.